Good morning, friends. This is Paul Flannelly, and I'm here in, uh, with uh, Des Bishop, who is uh, just over from Ireland, and he's doing a show uh, downtown or later on in the week and uh, into next weekend, uh, and it's called My Dad Was Nearly James Bond. Des Bishop, you're very welcome. Thanks. Great to be here. So you've just come back from your, you toured in uh, Scotland. Yeah, I was doing uh, the stand-up comedy show at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, and uh, we did a month there, pretty much the whole month of August. It went uh, went really well uh, with my new show called My Dad Was Nearly James Bond. Yeah. And uh, actually, we had the whole family over there. Great. So, yeah, it's kind of like, uh, it's the first time, you know, like I'm doing stand-up comedy now, whatever, uh, I guess 13 years, mm -hmm. and it's the first time my family has probably been involved. I mean, there's been a couple yeah. of jokes where they've been <laughs> the subject matter, but yeah. it's the first time where uh, it's pretty much been all hands on deck. I remember we were at a show uh, a few years back um, in Sunnyside. And, That's right. Uh, your folks were in the audience, and in the show, you were saying, oh, I don't know if I want to do this bit with my uh, parents sitting right up front. There. Oh, yeah, <laughs> there's a couple great. of bits. Actually, but, those uh, gigs, yeah. the couple of gigs that I've done over the years, like for the Irish Lobby for Immigration yeah. Reform, mm -hmm. where uh, you, those were pretty much the only gigs I ever did in New York. One or two of the stories that came out of those shows, because my parents were in the room, are actually in this show now. Mm -hmm. You know, stories about catching my dad watching porn and the like. <laughs> You know, the some of that stuff I probably would have never thought was yeah. funny, except that when they were in the room. But now it's uh, the humor of uh, teenaged angst and uh, the evolution of a relationship with the father has has is kind of the the comedic uh, elements of the show. Although it has kind of a yeah. a serious theme running through it. Well, um, the uh, just for to 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 let people know uh, here uh, in Ireland, uh, Des has had a great successful career. He is very very well known he's been doing stuff on television for rte and uh his show uh, sells out coming back from scotland now uh your your latest uh, show my dad was uh, nearly james bond and i hate to even group that in with this as your latest show because this is a very special show for you yeah um, well but it's been greatly reviewed you got a tremendous write-up in the guardian and uh, the scotsman number of uh, papers have uh really raved i think you did great out of the the uh, festival it was mm -hmm. uh, one of the one of the top shows but sorry uh des um tell us uh a little bit about this project uh, particularly. yeah well why actually why i brought the show back to new york was well for two reasons one uh because it had gone so well in edinburgh mm -hmm. and because my dad is kind of involved i mean i try to keep it a little bit of a secret of how involved he is but <laughs> because he very much enjoyed the experience uh of the show being on in edinburgh i wanted to give him another shot at it because the show is inspired by the fact that he was diagnosed with small cell lung cancer stage four uh last november it's it's nearly a year now which is actually kind of mm -hmm. almost miraculous because yeah. uh originally we didn't think my dad would still be around at this stage so uh Anyway, the reason why I wanted to put it on in New York is because, you know, they, my parents still live here. I moved to Ireland when I was 14, but my parents still live here. And I wanted him to uh, be close to the show, uh, you know, once again, you know, a little bit more. I mean, I'm going to tour the show around Ireland. So I, I threw on these gigs in New York at the last minute because uh, the show is it's pretty much his, his life story. You know, he was an actor and a model before I was born, and he gave that up. For us, myself, and my two brothers, Mike and Aiden, we grew up here in, in Flushing, Queens. And, uh, you know, I think uh, my dad kind of regretted that sacrifice a bit at times. Not regretted, he didn't regret having us, but, you know, like, like a lot of men, I think, you know, they regret the sacrifices that they have to make to be a good father, you know. And, and, and you didn't particularly make that easier on him either uh, growing up uh. yeah we, because we were brats <laughs> yeah because we were brats and he probably thought i sacrificed my dreams for this for this lack of respect uh, but uh, I, I actually i very but much he, uh, i i tackle that uh, that journey in the show because yeah. uh, you know i think when you become a teenager you you lose all respect for your parents part of your evolution mm -hmm. and uh, mark twain said it best when he said uh, at 14 i was convinced my parents were idiots and at 21 i was amazed how much they had learned in the meantime <laughs> and uh, a lot of the humor comes from that time actually yeah. you know in the show sure. but um but uh, a little bit about uh, you, now your dad with the the, the role uh, oh yeah of course <laughs> so basically uh, he, he he had like some successes you know he had some bit parts in movies a couple of lines in zulu and day of the triffids but why the show is called my dad was nearly james bond is uh he 
was up for the role of James Bond for On Her Majesty's Secret Service after Sean Connery had given it up. Uh, not a great James Bond to go for because Connery was always going to be a tough act to follow. George Lazenby got the role. My dad didn't get it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was always a big story in our house that my dad had actually gone up for that role. I think when we were younger, he used to try to tell the story as if himself and Lazenby were sort of waiting by the phone as if they were the last <laughs> two in it. I think more realistically, he just read for the role which in itself is pretty amazing because there's a certain criteria that you have to fulfill to be considered for James Bond yes Uh, in other words you know you have to be quite good looking and charismatic Mm -hmm. and my dad had all those things he was in the same modeling agency as George Lazenby actually Mm. and uh, I guess it was a real near miss it was an excitement of that time and soon after that actually he he moved to New York Uh, Mm -hmm. his other regret I think because um, I think he might have felt that if he'd stayed in London he might have uh, achieved more. You know, he kind of lost the heat mm-hmm. that was on him. And uh, essentially, basically, uh, the, those regrets uh, are quite dramatically dismissed as a result of my dad's cancer diagnosis. We've had some amazing moments together as a family. Uh, a, a strange thing. Cancer is a horrible thing. I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, trying to pretend that's not the case, but... It is. It breaks down a lot of barriers in a family. A passport to intimacy, I heard it described as recently. And uh, that liberation that happens as a result of death's imminence and all these things has, strangely enough, uh, been quite an inspiration to me, inspiration for the family. But in terms of a stand-up comedy show, uh, it's an interesting area because uh, it changes the dynamics of a family. To almost, It's almost unrecognizable. And uh, particularly in the sense that you become the parent of your parents, you know, and I think yeah. that's a switch that a lot of people can identify with. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you become the parent of your parents, you learn a lot of things and you have the unfortunate realization you never wanted to have, which is the realization that when your mother always said to you, one day you would understand that it, <laughs> that it's true. I, I totally understand, you know, w- what it is to have uh, familial responsibilities even before I had a child myself. And uh, it very much charters that uh, that transition in, in a funny way, and uh, but but not always funny. I, I allow it to be emotional when it when it should be emotional, and yeah. uh, you know it's a it's really a celebration. Well, first of all, it's in honor of the job that my father did. He did a fantastic job, and it's really um, I guess a celebration of the heroics of fatherhood against the empty heroics of James Bond, who's a, a fictional character, and. Uh, you know, a, a thank you and a celebration for the sacrifices that, that fathers make mm-hmm. for their children, you know. And also um, a, a look at dealing with death, you know, something we're all going to have to deal with. And stand-up comedians thrive in mm-hmm. areas where people, you know, are, things that people would go through and say, oh, that's so true, I never thought of that. Well, death is a guarantee for all of us, so Certainly we might is. as well look at it in those terms. My friend uh, Maliki McCourt was very fond of saying that we, we suffer from 100% mortality. And, uh, <laughs> that's, that's true, 100%. So, so, uh, so yeah, it's been very enjoyable. I mean, really well received in Edinburgh, like a much yeah. more powerful response than I was expecting. Uh, you know, particularly from other performers really were into the show and uh, it's amazing to see. I, I'm used to making people laugh. I wasn't used to making people have strong emotional responses yeah. and uh, was, it, was, it was fun, it was enjoyable and it's very... You know, it's like not a great thing to have to deal with cancer in your family, but it's very therapeutic to be able to bring everybody together in a way and rally yes. around this fun experience mm-hmm. rather than focusing on the fact that, you know, there's horrible things going on or that my dad doesn't feel that great. You know, instead, we're all just, you know, we're strangely enough having quite a good time with it. It's, uh, yeah, it is. It's, and it's difficult. It's, it's, um, uh, you know, if you're positive and you have your, that, that's one thing, but also when you're in discomfort and pain and going through the chemotherapy, it's hard to be. <laughs> it is. You, know, it's you hard. can have the most positive attitude in the world, but when it hurts, it hurts. And, yeah, and, and it's even and it's like tough. since Edinburgh, my dad's had some more chemo. So he, yeah. you know, he hasn't been in as good form, yeah. but he does have those memories. And, yeah. you know, the truth is, my dad's diagnosis is, is terminal. And uh, you can get chemo to prolong life, which is, my yeah. dad has had a has a good run at it, you know, and the first cycles of chemo were difficult, but not as difficult as we thought. But there's no point in doing that unless you use the time. And yeah. the fact that, you know, he has been able to get involved in the show and, you know, that like for a man that sacrificed his dreams for his children, yeah. the fact that he's involved in one final performance, like in, in a real way, you mm-hmm. know, is a it's a nice way to it's a nice way to go out. 
Well, um, the the reviews uh, have been brilliant. Um, I particularly like the one in the Guardian. Uh, any of you, our listeners out there, can can check that out online. But even better than that, uh, go down to the Barrow Street Cinema this uh, this week and, yeah. and this weekend and uh, see this show. Yeah, and, Thursday, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Thursday, fr- there's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night show. Yeah, and, and a Saturday uh, matinee and a, and a Sunday matinee. Saturday and Sunday matinee. Uh, if you want information on, on this, you can go to, uh, what's the best way, Des? Well, Des I guess desbishop.com or barrowstreettheater.com. Okay. And uh, you'll find the, all the information there. And if I can get it sorted out, we'll put a link on our, uh, I'm sure we can. Um, I'll put a link on our irishradio.com. Yeah, you, know, you can Facebook me, Twitter me. Facebook, the whole lot. Yeah. Anything. Facebook yeah. me, Twitter me. Oh, easy yeah. to find. Yeah, you face... Uh, Google Des Bishop New York, it'll come up. Yeah, so that's it. Jasun Makanaspig. And uh, so come on down. I'll be down there. And uh, Yeah, uh, come and meet Paul. Yeah, come put on down and meet Put me. a face to the voice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Des, I want to thank you very much, and I wish you all the success with this. Thanks and, very much, Paul. And, uh, and with your dad as well. A lovely, lovely man. Uh, Thanks. I, and uh, we'll see you. Uh, well, I'll see you down at the show. And, uh, and definitely the next time I'm home, I'll look you up as well. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Des.